Alexei Navalny, Russia's leading opposition figure, has died at age 47 while serving a sentence of more than 30 years on multiple charges. On February 16th, 2024, the world was shocked by the viral news of the death of Alexei Navalny, the most prominent opposition leader and critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Navalny, who had been imprisoned in a remote colony since 2021, reportedly collapsed and died after a walk in the prison yard. While the Russian authorities claimed that the cause of death was unknown, speculations by many suggest disturbing foul play. So here's the question. Is the Russian government responsible for the death of its one opposition? Stay with us. As we unravel the shocking circumstances around the death of Alexei Navalny. The death of Alexei Navalny. But moments later, at passport control, Navalny was told he was being detained for questioning. There was time for a final kiss with his wife, Yulia, and then he was led away. It's been three years since Alexei Navalny had been in prison. He had just been recovering from a suspected poison attack when he was arrested. Navalny had endured a lot of abuse while in prison, for instance. He had suffered 300 days of solitary confinement since his incarceration in 2021. That is almost a year, one third of his time in prison. But Alexei remained undeterred. He appeared in a video on the 15th of February. In the video, he was making a court appearance via a remote video link from his prison. Navalny can be seen in good spirits, even joking with the judge. He can be heard telling the judge to give him some of his huge federal salary because he, Navalny, was broke. In less than 24 hours after this video was taken, Alexei Navalny was dead. Reports started floating out from Moscow at about 11 a.m. GMT that Navalny was dead, but his family, close friends, and associates could not believe what they were hearing. However, soon after, a report from the Federal Penitentiary Service confirmed their worst fears. The service announced that the prominent opposition figure, Alexei Navalny, had experienced a health emergency that day, February 16th, according to a statement released. Following a walk at the penal colony where he was serving his sentence, he collapsed within the high-security penal colony. Navalny lost consciousness. Shock! outrage after one of Vladimir Putin's sharpest critics, Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, was reported dead in a Russian prison, reportedly dying after taking a walk, a fatal walk. Emergency medical personnel at the facility, located in the remote Yamalo Nenets autonomous region, immediately attended to him, but their efforts to revive Navalny were unsuccessful. The cause of his sudden collapse and the official statement did not speculate on the cause of his sudden loss of consciousness. Rushing to the scene within minutes, medical personnel from Labitnangi City Hospital fought tirelessly for over 30 minutes to revive Alexei Navalny, as reported by various Russian state-owned media outlets citing hospital officials. Despite their their valiant efforts, Navalny succumbed to his condition. Russia's investigative committee launched a probe into Alexei Navalny's sudden demise, promising a set of investigative and operative measures. His body is expected to embark on a journey from the icy prison colony back to Moscow for an autopsy, a process that could stretch for weeks before revealing the cause of death. Alexei Navalny kissed his wife Yulia goodbye before being led away by police. He'd been back in his home country for just a few minutes, having arrived in Moscow on a flight from Berlin. In. Navalny, freshly recovered from the suspected poisoning in Germany, made the daring return to Moscow, only to be apprehended within moments of landing at Sheremetyevo airport. A lightning-fast hearing at a Moscow police station saw Alexei Navalny remanded in pre-trial detention for 30 days. The judge cited violations of his suspended sentence, a move that was widely seen as nothing but a political hatchet job. But Navalny, defiant as ever, used his short court appearance to ignite dissent. He urged viewers in a video to not be afraid and to take to the streets in protest. He called on the Russian public not to do it for him, but for themselves and their future. His call had the exact effect he wanted. Russians took to the streets in protest. Navalny's defiance did not deter Russian authorities. They pressed on with their designs for him. A Moscow court sentenced Alexei Navalny to two and a half years in prison for allegedly violating the terms of his parole. But defiant, even behind bars, Navalny embarked on a three-week hunger strike, drawing global attention to his deteriorating health and raising concerns about the prison conditions. 
conditions and his access to proper medical care. His actions served to drive even more Russians to protest. In an effort to crack down on the protest leaders, the Russian authorities delivered a hammer blow to Russia's opposition movement. A Moscow court branded Alexei Navalny's anti-corruption organization and regional offices extremist, effectively dismantling his political network. Facing prosecution and pressure, close associates of Navalny fled the country. Yet, defiance flickered from behind bars. Navalny maintained contact with his team and kept his social media presence alive through their updates. This crackdown sent shockwaves through Russia, chilling free speech. Already serving two and a half years for fraud and contempt of court, Navalny was on Tuesday sentenced to an additional nine years in jail to be served in a maximum security prison. On March 22, 2022, a Russian court added another nine years to Alexei Navalny's imprisonment, finding him guilty of embezzlement and contempt of court in a case his supporters vehemently denounced as fabricated. This harsh sentence, delivered amidst Russia's invasion of Ukraine, transferred Navalny to a harsher, maximum security prison in the Vladimir region. This was done to further isolate the prominent opposition figure. Despite the bars of his prison cell, Alexei Navalny's voice refused to be silenced. From his perch within Russia's penal system, he continued to be a vocal critic. He condemned Russia's war on Ukraine. Through carefully crafted social media posts and defiant statements during court appearances, he condemned the invasion, rallying public opposition and defying the Kremlin's narrative. Navalny's team announced the rebirth of his anti-corruption foundation as an international entity, a bold move defying attempts to silence his voice. Even within the confines of his prison cell, he remained active, filing lawsuits and attempting to form a labor union. Yet, his defiance met harsh reprisals. Penitentiary officials, employing a tactic of a thousand cuts, subjected him to repeated solitary confinement for seemingly minor infractions like an unbuttoned shirt or missed face-washing time. Alarms over Alexei Navalny's health were sounded on January 11, 2023, when over 400 Russian doctors penned an open letter to President Putin, their urgent plea, an end to the abusive jail conditions they believed were endangering Navalny, who reportedly lacked basic medication after battling the flu. His team's concerns only amplified in April, citing acute stomach pain and suspicions of slow poisoning. In April of 2023, alarm bells rang anew for Alexei Navalny. Gripped by severe stomach pain, his spokesperson, Kira Yarmish, raised the chilling possibility of slow poisoning, made worse by the prison's inedible food. The prison authorities denied him the ability to acquire outside sustenance. Days later, during a video court appearance, things took a darker turn. New charges of extremism and terrorism were leveled against him, potentially adding another life sentence to his already dire situation. His bitter laughter echoed through the courtroom as he sarcastically asked if they thought he was conducting terror attacks from prison now. A cloak of secrecy descended upon Penal Colony No. 6 in June 2023. A makeshift courtroom emerged within its imposing walls solely to try Alexei Navalny. Yet, even before Gavel met Wood, the judge slammed the door shut, barring public and media scrutiny despite Navalny's defiant demand for transparency. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has just been found guilty and sentenced to 19 years in prison in his latest trial on extremist charges. This is the fifth criminal trial where he's been found guilty, all of which are seen as attempts to silence one of Putin's most vocal political opponents. In a dramatic end to the secret court proceedings, the prosecution in Alexei Navalny's June 2023 trial demanded a staggering 20-year prison sentence, according to his team. Navalny himself, bracing for the verdict, grimly predicted that it would be huge huge like something Stalin would do, invoking the notorious Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. On August 4, 2023, his grim premonition materialized. A 19-year sentence was handed down, further entrenching him in Russia's prison system. We're learning that jailed Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny is missing from prison. His team just posted that his whereabouts are not known. They can't find him at penal colonies. He's been missing for six days. An unsettling new chapter opened up on December 11th, 2023, as Alexei Navalny's whereabouts became covered in mystery. Prison officials at the Vladimir Penal Colony, his known location, informed his lawyer of a heart-stopping fact. Navalny was no longer listed among the inmates. This abrupt disappearance sparked alarm and sent shockwaves through his supporters and the international community. A Christmas surprise, but not a joyous one, came on Christmas Day, 2023, as Alexei Navalny's whereabouts were finally revealed after weeks of heavy 
silence. His associates confirmed he was located in a notorious prison colony nicknamed the Polar Wolf, situated above the Arctic Circle. This news, breaking almost three weeks after contact was lost, was met with a mixture of relief and concern. Adding to the drama, Navalny himself broke his silence on Boxing Day with a cynical statement about his transfer. The Polar Wolf is known for its harsh conditions and isolation, so the fear for Navalny's health and safety was made worse. A roller coaster of defiance and isolation unfolded for Alexei Navalny in the Arctic penal colony. On January 10, 2024, a video link revealed a smiling, joking Navalny, a stark contrast to his earlier claims of isolation in a tiny punishment cell for a minor infraction. By February 1st, Navalny, undeterred, urged Russians to use the March presidential election as a platform for dissent, urging them to vote at a specific time. He did this via a social media post, a final message of love echoed from the Arctic prison colony. On February 14th, 2024, just two days before his death, Alexei Navalny penned a heartfelt tribute to his wife on Telegram. His last message of love to his wife just served to underline Navalny's large heart that could look past hardship and reach for love. The Many Trials of Alexei Remember Alexei's poisoning mentioned earlier? Well, it wasn't the first time a deadly chemical was used on him. In 2017, Alexei unfolded in Omsk. Navalny's wife, Yulia, and personal doctor faced bureaucratic hurdles, even needing a marriage certificate to see him. Meanwhile, a plane stood ready to whisk him away for specialized treatment in Berlin. Finally, after 31 agonizing hours, a German doctor was permitted to access him. The doctor documented worrying signs, a slow heart rate, dangerously low body temperature, and unresponsive pupils. This glimpse into his critical condition emphasized the urgency of getting him out of Russia. A tug of war for Navalny's life ensued. Omsk's doctors initially deemed him too unstable for travel, then mysteriously released him, allowing transfer to Berlin's Charité Hospital. There, a grim picture emerged, poisoning by a cholinesterase inhibitor nerve agent. Omsk's doctors, however, maintained he was never poisoned and denied any pressure from officials. As investigations went deeper, the exact substance remained unknown. The battle for Navalny Navalny's life stretched into September, with him in a coma and facing potential lasting damage, German doctors warned. While Russian counterparts remained adamant he wasn't poisoned, Dr. Murakovsky, head of the Omsk hospital, demanded proof from Berlin and claimed their analysis showed no nerve agents. He even released purported independent findings backing his stance. Though he confirmed administering an antidote used for nerve agent poisoning, he denied any connection. Doctors at the hospital treating the poison Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny say his condition is improving and he's out of his medically induced coma. A glimmer of hope shined on as Navalny emerged from his coma. Doctors reported him responding to verbal stimuli, though long-term effects remained unknown. Security tightened at the hospital amidst heightened media attention, with reports of his recovery described as exaggerated by his spokesperson. Finally, later that month, a significant milestone, Navalny was breathing on his own and able to stand. Notably, the hospital's statement now included both him and his wife, suggesting his involvement in communication decisions. On September 15th, 2021, a defiant message came from Navalny's hospital bed he'd returned to Russia. The Kremlin shot down hopes of him meeting with Putin, but a photo from his hospital bed signaled his determination. By the end of September, he was discharged and his recovery was ongoing. While healing, he dropped a bombshell accusation laying the blame for his ordeal squarely on Putin. To support his allegation, he pointed out the limited circle with access to Novichok, the likely nerve agent that was used against him. Alexei Navalny endured many things in his determination to bring awareness to the Russian public of the excesses of the government. Navalny had been politically active since 2000, but it was a decade later that he would begin to face serious damage from his activism. Out of nowhere in July 2012, the investigative committee accused Alexei Navalny of embezzlement. The charges stemmed from his time advising a regional governor. He swiftly denied accusations and fired back that the movie was born of political motives. Navalny and his supporters saw the move as a calculated attempt to silence dissent, citing the previous closure of the case due to lack of evidence. A report titled An Analysis of the Russian Federation's Prosecutions of Alexei Navalny was published by a global law firm. The report alleged that the Kremlin was systematically abusing the legal system to stifle opposition. At the Kirovlas trial in April 2013, Alexei Navalny, a vocal critic of the government, was sentenced to five years in prison for the alleged embezzlement. The charges, vehemently contested by Navalny and his supporters, cast a long shadow over the fairness of the trial. The judge's sentence mirrored the prosecutor's 
his request, almost word for word, yet a bizarre twist followed. The prosecution itself appealed the sentence, leading to a swift suspension of the sentence and Navalny's release. In a landmark decision, the European Court of Human Rights ruled in February 2016 that Russia had violated Alexei Navalny's right to a fair trial in his 2013 embezzlement case. This verdict, coupled with a hefty financial award to Navalny, delivered a blow to the legitimacy of the original conviction. However, the saga wasn't over. Russia's Supreme Court, while acknowledging the ECHR's ruling, sent the case back for retrial in 2016. This seemingly hopeful development took a grim turn in 2017 when the same Kirov court handed Navalny an identical five-year suspended sentence. In 2008, a potential business deal sparked a legal firestorm. Alexei Navalny's brother, Oleg, offered Yves Rocher Vostok, a cosmetic subsidiary, delivery services through his company, Glavpod Piska. The deal was signed, but Glavpod Piska subcontracted the work, raising questions later about fulfillment. The case dragged into 2014 when Alexei Navalny and his brother Oleg found themselves embroiled in a complex legal battle stemming from this business deal with Yves Rocher. Accusations flew as prosecutors claimed their company, Glavpod Piska, inflated costs and embezzled funds, siphoning millions from the cosmetics giant. The defense countered, arguing that Glavpod Piska acted as a legitimate middleman, overseeing logistics and bearing responsibility for the delivery process. The case was further muddied when funds allegedly flowed to a company linked to Navalny's parents, raising questions about potential money laundering. Yves Rocher was adamant about not losing any money in the deal, and pretty much everyone else agreed, except for Shustov, the CEO of multi-profile processing company. He said he heard about losses from an investigator, but never bothered to check himself. Weird, right? Both the Navalny brothers and their lawyers said Alexei had nothing to do with the whole thing, and everyone else who testified said they'd never even met him before. Russian opposition leader and anti-corruption blogger Alexei Navalny has been put under house arrest rather than sent to jail as he waits for his trial. He's already serving a suspended sentence for an embezzlement conviction. In the current case, Navalny and his brother Oleg are accused of defrauding French cosmetics company Yves Rocher. In February 2014, accused of violating travel restrictions, Alexei Navalny found himself confined to his home, unable to communicate with anyone except family, lawyers, and investigators. He cried foul, calling it politically motivated, and appealed to the European Court of Human Rights. Amidst the silence imposed, his voice still found a way out, with his team and wife posting on his social media. However, the authorities clamped down, blocking his blog and tightening restrictions. Yet, cracks appeared. He gained the right to communicate with co-defendants, then the media, and finally, to send official letters. Despite repeated pleas, the house arrest dragged on. On December 30th, 2014, a verdict like a hammer blow fell. Both Navalny brothers were convicted of fraud and money laundering, with Alexei receiving a suspended sentence while Oleg was sent straight to prison. Public outcry erupted, with thousands gathering in Moscow to protest. Defiant, Alexei broke his house arrest to join the rally, only to be promptly re-arrested. The legal battle continued, with complaints filed to the European Court of Human Rights. While some charges were dropped, the core verdict stood, leaving both sides dissatisfied and the fate of the Navalny brothers and their fight against the perceived injustice hanging in the balance. While Alexei Navalny went through several ordeals before his death, his beginnings, however, give an insight into what he stands for. The Life and Times of Alexei Alexei Anatolievich Navalny was born on June 4, 1976. His background reflects the complex history of the region. His father hailed from Zalicia, a village close to the border with Belarus that was displaced due to the Chernobyl disaster in Ukraine's Kyiv Oblast. Born into a military family, Navalny's childhood unfolded against a backdrop of contrasting realities. His father, a Soviet army officer, exposed him to the structured world of garrisons near Moscow. Yet, summers spent with his grandmother near Chernobyl. Ukraine offered a pleasant contrast. This time spent, nurtured a deep connection to her land and language. He became fluent in Ukrainian, but the idyllic countryside was forever marked by the 1986 nuclear disaster. Witnessing the forced evacuation of his family and the Soviet government's attempts to downplay the catastrophe instilled in Navalny, a deep skepticism toward authority and a keen awareness of injustice. The rhythmic clatter of weaving looms formed the soundtrack to summers for a young Alexei Navalny 
Navalny. His parents, Anatoly and Lyudmila, ran a basket weaving factory in the quaint village of Kobyakovo, nestled within Russia's Vologda Oblast. Established in 1994, the factory became more than just a source of livelihood. It embodied the spirit of entrepreneurial endeavor and small town community. Navalny's educational journey spanned diverse institutions and disciplines. He completed his secondary education in 1993, laying the foundation for further intellectual pursuits. Law beckoned, culminating in a degree from the prestigious People's Friendship University of Russia in 1998. Seeking broader knowledge, he went all in into the world of securities and exchanges at the Financial University, graduating in 2001. His thirst for learning extended beyond national borders, as evidenced by his scholarship to the prestigious Yale World Fellows Program in 2010. In the wake of his passing, a void is left not just in the world of Russian politics, but also in the heart of a family. Alexei Navalny leaves behind his wife, Yulia, with whom he navigated the complexities of life both personal and political. Their two children, Zahar and Daria, must now face a future without their father's guiding hand and infectious spirit. From a scientist's daughter to the first lady of the Russian opposition, Yulia Navalnaya's life has been an unexpected journey. Born Yulia Abrosimova in 1976, her childhood saw a scientist father and a mother working for the Soviet government. A family shift followed her parents' divorce, leading to a stepfather. Employed in the heart of the planned economy, Yulia Navalnaya's early career weaved international threads with domestic experience. After graduating with expertise in international economic relations from the prestigious Plekhanov Academy, she ventured abroad for an internship, honing her global perspective. Returning home, she delved into the world of finance, securing a position at a Moscow bank. This initial foray into the financial sector may have equipped her with valuable insights and skills that would later prove crucial in supporting her husband's anti-corruption activism. In 1998, fate intertwined Yulia and Alexei Navalny, then a rising lawyer. They met while on vacation in Turkey. Two years later, their love story blossomed into marriage, and in 2001, their family welcomed a daughter, Daria. Seven years later, their son Zahar joined the family, completing their circle. Beyond the personal sphere, Yulia became a steadfast partner in Alexei's political pursuits, her unwavering support forming the bedrock of his endeavors. As Alexei Navalny's star rose in the Russian political firmament, a spotlight simultaneously fell on his wife, Yulia. Thrust from relative anonymity into the role of first lady of the opposition, Yulia's life transformed. No longer solely focused on family, she became her husband's first secretary and confidant. While never seeking the limelight for herself, her devotion earned her comparisons to the Decembrist wives, historical figures who stood by their exiled husbands. Her voice rang out at rallies, her words unafraid. Notably, she famously labeled the head of the National Guard a thief and bandit, demonstrating her fierce loyalty and willingness to confront even the most powerful figures. The late summer of 2020 saw Yulia Navalnaya thrust into the global spotlight. Following her husband's suspected poisoning in Russia, she emerged as a powerful voice demanding his release and medical treatment abroad. Facing down authorities, she even appealed directly to President Putin, her resolve unwavering. When Navalny's poisoning was confirmed in Germany, she challenged a prominent Russian doctor who questioned the findings, calling his actions political, not medical. Standing by her husband's side throughout his recovery, her dedication earned her widespread recognition. She was declared Hero of the Year by a renowned Russian newspaper and quoted extensively by international media. In January 2021, Julia, Navalnaya's courage took center stage once more. Returning to Russia alongside her ailing husband, she faced his immediate arrest at the border. Upon Alexei's arrest at the border, her voice rang out, defiant and unwavering. She told her audience that they were not afraid, urging others to follow suit. This defiant message resonated, painting her as a signal of courage in the face of adversity. The persecution didn't stop there. Accusing authorities of treating her like the wife of an enemy of the people, she drew chilling parallels to historical periods of repression. Despite her own detention, she remained resolute, announcing her participation in protests, demanding her husband's release. Their daughter has taken after her parents with the same passion. Daria Navalnaya, also known as Dasha, has emerged as a vocal critic of the injustices endured by her father, Alexei Navalny. A graduate of Stanford University in the United States, she is currently 23 years old. Despite controversies surrounding Navalny's views on immigration and Ukraine, Dasha steadfastly supported her father throughout his imprisonment, persistently advocating for his cause. In the early 2000s, Alexei Navalny's political journey began with Yabloko, a liberal party aiming to counter new electoral hurdles. While not a staunch supporter, he joined in 2000, rising within the ranks. From 2004 to 2007, he served as Moscow branch leader and even participated 
divided in their 2003 election campaign, yet differences emerged. In 2005, he initiated youth-focused initiatives like the Democratic Alternative Movement, showcasing his independent political aspirations. He also organized debates on state-run TV, highlighting his media savvy but facing censorship. A key turning point came in 2006, when he supported a nationalist march, clashing with Yabloko's values. This ultimately led to his expulsion in 2007. Undeterred, Navalny co-founded Narod, prioritizing immigration policy and aligning with nationalist groups. In December 2011, Russia's contested parliamentary elections sparked outrage. Amidst accusations of fraud, thousands took to the streets, including opposition leader Alexei Navalny. His arrest, along with hundreds of others, fueled the flames of discontent, transforming him from an online figure to a tangible symbol of resistance. His imprisonment alongside prominent activists further galvanized the movement, with some even resorting to hunger strikers in protest. Upon release, Navalny's message resonated louder than ever. He called for unity against Putin, even hinting at his potential candidacy in future fair elections. Mass rallies, estimated in the tens of thousands, became a regular occurrence, showcasing the growing momentum of the anti Kremlin movement. Despite facing continued arrests and harassment, Navalny emerged as a pivotal figure, his unwavering defiance inspiring many and solidifying his position as a leading voice of dissent. Navalny's relationship with political parties was complex and dynamic. In 2012, he initially distanced himself from a new party formed by his allies, citing outdated structures and potential legal complications. Yet he offered support and guidance, hinting at future involvement. True to his word, he joined and even led the party in 2013, aiming to provide an alternative in the political landscape. However, bureaucratic hurdles and legal challenges repeatedly thwarted their registration attempts, culminating in the party's dissolution in 2015. In 2017, a blow struck Navalny's political ambitions. Despite his popularity, a corruption conviction, deemed politically motivated by many, barred him from running for president in 2018. The EU expressed concern, while Navalny urged a boycott, calling it a denial of millions of votes. Undeterred Third, he organized protests, facing arrests and charges. Even after his release, he was repeatedly detained and jailed for organizing demonstrations. The world will miss Alexei Navalny and his indomitable spirit. So, share your thoughts about his death in the comments section. Also, for more engaging videos like this one, click on one of the cards showing on your screen now.